<laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And as we've been working on this garage project, Eric, you know, now we have the, you know, we have the new door and the new floor, and it's all insulated and painted and clean, and we're going to get these organization systems. But the stuff that we have been um, kind of downsizing after having it in a pod for a couple months, and now we're getting our life back into the garage, we also have paint. We have cans of paint. You know, you're not alone. I also have maybe paint? seven, eight gallons of paint just oh, sitting there. Oh my gosh, I bet we have maybe 20. Yeah, I, we have paint I, I listen. Because I you got have to have it. it for touch ups. I know. After you painted that living room, you want to have it for later, right? You yep. have to have the touch ups. So, thought we'd talk about how do you store paint and then how do you dump paint? Because there's and you, things you, you just cannot dump it in a dumpster or can't. pour it down the no, drain. No, 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 no. Not. So first, how do you store it? And let me just tell you, I've came, I've come up with a really cool, cool way because you know I'm not really into all of those big cans. We have the big, huge gallon cans, right? Right. And we have about twenty of them, uh-huh. and they're probably maybe have an inch of paint. In each of them. Right. And I know that you want to have it stored properly so that the paint is still good and viable, right? Mm hmm. You know what the key is? What do you think? Water bottles. Get out of here, water bottles. What do you mean? Have you heard of this? No, go ahead. Do tell. Water bottles. You mean like a miniature water bottle Any from a. size of water bottles, and you put a couple of marbles in the bottom, kind of like a spray can has the little you BB beads. Devil. Incredible. Now we have so then done, it shakes up good. You shakes got, up good. It's sealed tight. You can tight. see the color. You can see the color, and it can be as small and teeny tiny. It can you be those little. You have done it again. I, By I, the way, I'm thinking this is going to be a good solution. This is a huge solution because here's the deal. Yeah. All you really need is a tiny little water bottle full of paint to do touch-ups. And if you need more, guess what? You just take that paint to the paint store. They, they rub it on the car. They dry they, it. Yes. They match it exactly. You can even, with a Sharpie, write down the formula if uh-huh. it's on the can. Uh-huh. Oftentimes the can will rust and you won't be able to read the formula anymore. The paper's been torn off the can, obviously. So what do you do? To your point, water bottles. Put a little Sharpie on there with a label. Write down the formula. You're ready to go. Guess what else? What? Less space in the garage, less space on the shelves. Oh, way better. Because now, you, I love how you can see the color through the water bottle. You're repurposing the water bottle, right? Because we know that those water bottles, even though they're quote-unquote recyclable, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? This is way better. And um, you can put it in some kind of a, a crate or a box or something and have them all with, a, with handles. And then you can take That's them it. to wherever you need to go. Anyway, I just thought that was great. But now, now that we have that dealt with, what are we going to do in terms of... Um, safely storing the paint because I want to, let's say that you haven't gotten around putting them in, in the water bottles. Let's say you have them sitting there in these cans. What do you know? I bet that most people, Eric, aren't having the lid as tight as it should be. No, they're not. You can't really do it unless you pound it down with a hammer. Even still, paint is dried within the little cracks around the cylindrical can. It doesn't get a good seal, so it invariably will dry out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's one of those things, too, where it is probably one of the uh, most hazardous things. It's hazardous waste that we have just sitting around our homes and our garages. And, and if it's not properly stored or disposed of, that's not a good thing. So, mm-hmm. And it's because of what's in the paint, right? That's it. You know, there's pigment. There's If it's an older can, there's going to be lead in it, which mm-hmm. is really harmful to human beings and pets, obviously. So, What about the latex? And the latex stuff isn't great either, all, you know, at the end of the day. So, you know, if you have a small amount that you want to get rid of, what you can do is pour it out on a piece of cardboard and, like, paint it out, you know, and just sort of keep painting that piece of cardboard, let it dry, and then just throw that in the trash. You can do that. If you have cans that have more paint in oh, them, oh wait, I, 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 I get you now. You, you so, know what I'm saying? So you, oh, that really? And yeah, that's yeah. okay to throw that, that in the trash. That's okay to do. You can because do that because, because it's fumes. already dried oh. and everything's fine. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. If maybe you, you don't. You, maybe you don't want to throw that piece of art away. I can see you oh, painting see. it, oh, and they're going to oh, oh, create wait. a lovely, a, a lovely piece of art. Yeah, no, a so love th- poem. Yeah, that's, that's that's one that's one way to do it. And then there are also you know all different places where once a month you can take some of these paint cans to your you know local hazardous waste disposal site, and you'll find them online in your town, and they'll give you a, a lead as to where to drive it. But please don't just dump paint down the drain or the storm drains or into the toilet or any of that stuff. It's it's just bad for the environment. Well, yeah, because of all the, the solvents and the additives that are in there, right? You know, and, exactly. And the older paint. So maybe you have some really old paint sitting around that lead was commonly added, you know, right. to make it harder. Right. Um, and, you know, it, 
it's and what I guess until 1990 even mercury was used in some of the latex uh, paints, and then later that was banned by the EPA. So in terms of safely storing it around your house, you know, or in your garage, you want to make sure it's really sealed tight. And then what? Just seal it tight. If you if you don't have a, a solid, here's here's the here's a good thing to remember. So mm-hmm. look at your paint can before you close it up after you've done your paint job. If you've got a lot of paint in the crack around the circle of the mm. of the can that itself, kind of, that lip thing, that, yeah, the yeah, lip, yeah, uh. the lip part, you know that when you seal it, it's not going to be a clean solid seal because that paint is going to get in the way of creating that solid seal. So, ideally, you would want to transfer it either a to the water bottles like you're talking mm-hmm. about, or a brand new can that you can buy at the big box stores. Oh, They'll sell idea. these empty cans. That's a good idea. And then you can relabel it cleanly with a sharpie on the outside of that can and know and ensure that you're going to have a great solid airtight seal. So that's the other option. Also, again, mason jars work great Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they're glass and they screw on, they're airtight. You're going to see the color through the mason jar. Again, you can write labels on top or directly onto the lid with a sharpie. I think, to your point, anything that's clear is going to be a much better option because over time you're going to start to forget what color you painted. And you'll see how much you have left. There you go. Now, how about this? Before you have to go to the whole dumping thing, because we do need, it is hazardous waste, we need to take it to our hazmat disposal. You might have one in your community that shows up every couple of weeks or every month or so forth, right? Yeah. But before you even go there, there's some other alternatives to dispose of your paint. How about giving your extra paint to someone who can use it? Like there's there's a hobbyist or a friend who may need just a small amount of paint for a project or even local theater groups and schools. That's a good that idea. That are painting sets, you know what I mean? Or even... Yeah, you may have a couple extra gallons of that beautiful, you know, beige that you paint in your living room, so why not give it to the school? They can, like you said, they yeah. can paint sets. That's a great idea. And even low-income housing programs right. um, and rehabilitation organizations, uh, community groups, all these folks need some paint. You wouldn't think about it. And so no. your paint... They might even mix it all up. You know what I mean? They might make some new, unique color by adding your paint and other people's paint that they've now received. That's right. All right? Good idea. Um, you can actually, by the way, return extra paint to the store. Some paint companies now have gotten involved in recycling paints by that very thing of remixing and repackaging. That's not. That's actually great to know. Isn't that a good yeah. idea? So that's something... And so. Consider that, you know, as you're out running your errands, going to the big box stores or some of these mom and pop specialty paint stores, um, ask them, hey, is this something that I can do, you know, and, and keep that under, you know, your belt. You know, you know what else you could do? You can mix kitty litter in with paint that's still wet and, oh. and let that dry. Uh-huh. And once again, it's dry and the kitty litter has absorbed the moisture. It'll, it'll set up on you in a couple of hours. You can throw that away. Oh, yeah. so again, it's all about absorption. It's all about it being absorbed and dry, uh-huh. and then it's then it can be thrown uh-huh. in dumpsters in the garbage Very good. can. It's when it's wet it's and liquid. liquidy that's no good. Uh-huh. Yeah. You can also take some extra paint. There's a paint exchange or swap and drop programs. You go online, you can find that. Um, and some communities um, have and will start permanent locations for donating and uh, and taking paint. You know, call your local solid waste management district. You know, under the government management in your in your community, or even like um, the local extension agent for any programs in your community. So those are some things you can do. But and I say now, after you've done all that. You know, you've stored your paint in a brand new can or you've gone the Cindy route with the plastic water bottles, whichever you choose, or the Eric route with the glass mason jars and the lids. Either way, you're organized. You can see it. It's You're done with what you need to, to keep. Now you still have to dispose of some. Okay, right. so now what do you want to do? If you want to dispose of paint from your home, a good first step is to call the local county government, right? And because of the large volume of paint waste from home, some household collection events no longer take paint. So... It's it's amazing how many people have a lot of paint left over. I'm it's sure, al- it's yeah. almost becoming overwhelming on right. different county districts. Right. Wow. Yeah. So um, so just you know check it out. Find do a little bit of research and and because paint waste is usually disposed in a landfill after it's treated anyway, some collection centers advise homeowners to do this on your own instead of bringing paint waste to them. But check your local waste management district on collection events and so forth. So you know you can find in your state, in your county, in your district, uh, the best way to go so you know Good you idea. Know, your team. You know, you know what else, too? People often don't realize that paint thinner, Oh, if you use paint thinner and you put it it, you use the paint thinner that you've used to clean your brushes sure, or, sure. or clean up spills uh-huh. in a clear glass jar, 
and let it just sit for a couple of days, it'll separate and the paint oh, thinner will rise to the top like and the fat. sediment will be on the bottom. Uh-huh. You just skim off the paint thinner that's clear in another glass and then the stuff that's on the bottom is the bad stuff. Is the bad stuff that you can then have rags inside that jar and clean it up, let that dry, you can throw that out. Wow. But the paint thinner is completely reusable. It doesn't go bad, it just separates and then you can use the old stuff that's separated. That's a huge tip. I know, right? Wow, that's about a $50 million tip 52. right there. 52. <laughs> that's really, really helpful. Yeah. We'll, we'll put all this on the website because, I mean, I think we all deal with paint. We love to paint. It's we sure do. It's a great, makeover. easy way to do your, your room again. But, yeah. you know, and you want to have spare for touch-ups, but, you know, what? you've got, got to get rid of the bad stuff. I yep. love those ideas. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to, well, improve your home and improve your life. And eat your flan, by the and way. And have flan. <laughs>